Um, so, um, in this hour, I will be talking about a GNU program, which is called GNU Poke, uh, which indeed it is an extensible editor for structured binary data. So let's get with it. First, I will do a small introduction on the program. Um, I will explain the motivations that, that drove me, you know, to start the project. Now it's not just me working on it. There is other people. And, uh, and then I will, I will basically uh, show it a little bit to you, uh, how it works, what, is the, what it does. Now, um, the program initially was small and it, was, it used to be possible to introduce it in a talk like, uh, like uh, in 30, 40 minutes and show everything that it can do. But unfortunately or fortunately, now that's not longer possible because the program uh, is now much bigger and uh, it uh, it does many 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 things many different things so it is not possible to show them all in a in a talk in a single talk but i will try to give you you know like the flavor you know and and uh, of, of how it is to use this program and maybe it will be useful for you so then after that um, um i will talk a little bit about the project itself um about the book project itself then i will give you a little uh, a few um, uh, pointers to URLs, you know, and where is our homepage, the IRC channels we have, other community oriented uh, stuff that we do, and so on. So let's get with it. Mm, introduction. Okay, first of all, motivation. So this program is a binary editor, and um, I uh, got the idea of writing it. And I felt the need, I felt the itch, you know, of writing this program um, uh, two or three years ago uh, because during my job uh, I found myself and I still find myself very often in the need of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of picking, right, at uh, binary files, several sorts of binary files, mostly uh, shared objects, executables and so on. So I used to write the scripts like the one that you can see in this slide um, that basically use like utilities, like uh, in this case, object dump and then the D, you know, and so on and the calculator and the shell, of course, itself. In order to extract information from those binary files, operating that information somehow and then patch that information back. Um, this, this works, I mean, uh, you can use it, and I spent many years actually doing this, but uh, it's not a very satisfactory solution for many reasons. Uh, for starters, uh, it's quite fragile, right? Because if some of the programs that you use, like the object dump or the Minutils program, if they change the way they work or how they print the information on the terminal that you parse in your scripts, uh, then your script breaks. So then you find yourself continuously and constantly uh, having to update your 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 dirty your little set of dirty scripts, right? Like this one. So then I thought, well, um, it sounds to me that um, that I needed something better. So then I looked around, and um, and then I looked for uh, binary editors. Right or binary uh, manipulation, I don't know, libraries or anything. Actually, anything was good for me. And, uh, and then I found some programs. For example, there are some ELF shells. So those are programs which are specialized to hack and to manipulate, to read and to write and to change binary files or binary data of some particular flavor or format. Like, for example, there, are, there is an ELF shell, which is a program that is quite nice, actually, and uh, it knows about ELF files. So it knows about the contents of the ELF files, and it knows about the, the sections, the, the, the segments, all the flags, the header, everything. So if you, if you install that uh, ELF shell program, then you can manipulate your, your, your ELF files uh, in a quite nice way. The problem with that kind, with that kind of tools is that obviously they are hardwired to manipulate some particular format, in this case, the L files. So it is too specific, not good for me. 
because I don't, I not only work with L files, I need to manipulate other kind of uh, binary files. Then there are the, uh, let me call them like, like simplistic, well simplistic, it might sound like the, the depreciative, a depreciative adjective, but it's not, I mean, or simple, simple is better, um, simple binary editors. Those are the normal binary editors that everyone knows that you, uh, you open a file and then you get uh, all the bytes, right? And then you can change the value of the bytes of the file. And many of them, they give you, you know, like this, um, like this nice uh, ASCII dump, you know, so you can see the printed representation of the bytes that you are editing. Um, those are nice too, but those are very simple and those, most of them are just uh, byte editors, right? You can go and change bytes. Now, I don't want to change bytes. I want to change the value of an else location, for example, which yes, it is composed, composed by bytes, right? Uh, but it's not bytes. It's relocations offsets, for example, which have a sign, have an endianess, and many other details. So yeah, the simple editors, they were not good for this purpose neither. Um, then I also found another kind of programs, which are uh, parser generators. So let me explain this uh, a little bit uh, with, uh, let me share. <clears throat> this is part, this is in the book manual. Um, well, basically with what I call the code compute and code is how do you work with binary data? Um, usually you do something like this, what you can see in this, in, in this, web, in this web page. Uh, you usually have to write a program. Uh, this is a little C program that actually uh, decodes um, a 32 bits uh, signed integer from some file at some position, some offset, then multiplies it by two and then it writes it back to the file. So as you can see, this is a process of three different steps. First, you have to decode or unmarshal your data. In this case, you have to read the bytes composing that, that compose this number, and then you have to order those bytes, taking into account things like endianess, and then only then you have your data uh, already decoded in a, in a form, in a shape, in this case, uh, a signed 32 bits number that you can actually operate it with. In this case, you can multiply it by two. Now, once you multiply it, when you, once you compute with your data, then you want to put the data back in the file. And for that, you have to encode the data. And this is what you will need, what you will need in C to do, just to write back this, this, uh, this signed 32 bits in the year um, to write it back in the file. You have to encode it, and for example, and, also, and you, of course, you have to take into account NDNS and other things. So this is what I call, you know, the decode, compute, and code paradigm, basically, which is the normal one. Um, this is messy, this is error-prone, and uh, look at this, all the code you need to massage the data until you can have in a format that you can do fun, interesting things with it. Um, you have to do all this and all that, but what you are interested on is only that, right? I mean, you want to multiply something by two. So um, there are some programs out there, like for example, Kaitai Extract and other programs that allows you, that they allow you to describe the structure of the data and then they generate this for you in many programming languages. Like you can generate uh, decoders in C, you can generate decoders in, I don't know, in Java and in other programming languages. Um, so basically those programs, like I track, they generate this for you and they generate this for you and then you can basically fill in the, the gaps. But that was not very convincing for me neither because what I wanted to do was to open some binary data or a file and then I would like to poke at it interactively and immediately. So I did not want a program that would generate a C parser, C encoders and decoders for some uh, data structure that they would define, no. I wanted a program 
that given some description of the structure of the data will allow me to access and to manipulate the data immediately and interactively. And this is what I call the discrete compute paradigm, which is what POC implements. So instead of the of the above of the of what we saw in the in the previous page, in POC you could just describe something like this. You write a description like this. I will show you right now how this works in you know in practice. Um, and then you can immediately start operating on that data. So you don't need explicitly to decode it or to encode it. You just describe it and you compute with it. And everything else is transparent. So um, those were like sort of my requirements. Okay, back then. Okay, let me stop sharing my, my screen. Um, so I decided to start a program that does that because I could not find any existing alternative that was satisfactory to me. Um, because there were some stuff which were similar to what I was thinking about, but they were either proprietary, and of course that means that they are, I don't consider proprietary software or, uh, software at all, you know, I mean, that's not an option, um, or not satisfactory for other reasons. So I, just, I decided to, to write this program. So I did. Um, okay, well, it was not an easy thing to do, uh, mm, well, for several reasons. The first of all is that I'm not the smartest, you know, in the class. The second is that this, this, this looks like something like is trivial, but it's not. When you, you know, as, uh, as with many other domains in life, if you look at something uh, near enough, right, everything is super complex right and of course not trivial so it took a while to get something that actually makes sense and and, and works uh, in a satisfactory way but i think that we made it or oh, we are in it okay so before we get into it uh very fast um gnu book is the name of the program right book with little p and yes, this is a, a joke, you know, because of the remembering, you know, the, the basic poke and pick commands. Um, but then you will see now, we will see now that this program implements a domain specific language. This domain specific language is called poke with big P. Since poke with big P and poke with little P, they sound the same. Uh, this is sometimes confusing, but so you know. And then a pickle is basically a source file of poke code that implements some particular domain. Very often, um, a format, a file format, or it contains utilities of, uh, of uh, to do certain things like diff in utilities, diff.pk or so. Yeah. Okay, so let me let me show you the program. Um, hmm. Okay, so at this point, at this point, you should be seeing my terminal. Cool. Um, POC itself is, um, is, is, is actually a shared library. It is a library which contains most of the functionality, but it ships with, uh, with the POC application, with the POC program, which is a command line interface. So when you open it, you call it, you get greeted by a message. And then, okay, I have here my, my lines here, so I don't uh, uh, start uh, divagating. Okay, so now POC is, is waiting for commands. And then obviously I said, well, with, with POC you can edit binary data. Where is that binary data? It can be in files. So you can do things like open the file, like BNLS, for example. Um, now there is a command here, which let me, you know, which are your spaces, which are the entities being edited, as we call them, are your spaces, uh, I have open. As you can see here, um, I, I just opened a file with in mode read mode because I don't have right permissions in that file because it's been ls and uh, it is this size and this name. Very nice. Um, once I open uh, an IO space, I can, for example, dump the bytes. Remember those those simple editors that that will actually show you things like this. Well, POC is also simple in that sense. It also can do that. Um, but we cannot only edit uh, files, we can edit 
binary data in other media, in other supports. Like with MEM, for example, MEMFU, this creates a new IO space which is backed by a memory buffer, not by a file. So um, if we dump this IO space, is all zeros there, and this is not the previous file, right? In four IOs, now we see that we have uh, one file and one memory IOs. What else can we edit with POC? Well, we can edit the memory of some running process. Uh, I have a top command running around here, and the, the, the process ID is 95316. So, as you can see, now POC has opened the BNLS file, the, the full uh, memory IOS, and also the memory of the running process uh, top at this at this process id you can see that the size of the memory of the memory of the process is this is a 64 bits machine so the size is 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 the 64 bits wide virtual address space of the process which makes sense okay um so those are the open io spaces now let's select the memory io space well actually uh, I can, I could write with to the memory of the process, but I will not because I will crash it if I do it, you know, without uh, knowing what I am doing. So now I have selected the IO space, which is the memory buffer. Full. Okay. Um, so um, how can I access the information of the buffer? So I can, for example, ask for the byte at the option 23 bytes, which is zero. No surprises here. It is initially zero. But I can also do some more interesting stuff, which is set the value of the byte at 33 byte, uh, the byte 33 to FF. And then if I dump again, you will see that it changed in the IO space. If this was a file, this would have updated the file immediately. Um, in a similar way, I can say something like, uh, I, can say, I can do things like the integer of 13 bits. Yes, 13 bits actually. That's not a multiple of bytes. At uh, offset, uh, at offset, one bit equals six six six. Well, obviously it's difficult to correlate it because we are we are using here bit offsets and we are actually writing bit uh, not not byte. Uh, um, uh, well, not by the integers, right? So 13 is not a multiple of eight, and this works. Now, I could show you here, I could show you here that uh, how to work with more complex structs, like for example, uh, but instead of using the comma line interface, I will exit POC now, and I will run Emacs. Yes, and I will use um, another POC interface, not the command line interface, but this is an Emacs interface. Why? Because I live in Emacs and, um, well, uh, it's more convenient for me. Uh, please note that this Emacs interface is one week old and it's a still work in progress. So if something crashes very badly, please be understanding. So, well, okay, so I just started Emacs and this is the Emacs interface, which is more visual. That's why I'm using it to show you, right? But it is more or less the same thing. You have the prompt, a prompt here. And uh, uh, if I wanted to edit again the L file, BNLS, I do an open. As you can see, this is more visual because I have a buffer here, you know, that has the contents of the L file in this case. Um, and then in this buffer, you can scroll it, right? And you can, as you can see, well, there are some visual aids here. Okay, but I just opened this file. So, um, also, I could open the memory buffer. So, I said that I could say things like byte at the offset, um, two bytes equal six, 66, for example, right? Or, okay, A, B, right? You see how it changed, right? Here. But of course, you can um, you can do more uh, more complex stuff. A structure, remember, but you can use structures. 
So I can say, for example, that a foo, a foo, structure foo, is an integer called i uh, followed by a long called l. And then I could say that uh, the foo at two bytes, just not a byte now, but a foo at two bytes, is a foo where i is equals 10 and long equals 20. Uh, oh, sorry, <laughs> not long, <laughs> L. As you can see, that it, it changed accordingly. Now, um, you can do uh, more complex things like this, way more complex things like this. For example, let me open this buffer. This is an evaluation buffer, which is part of the Emacs interface that allow me to write, because in the prompt you can only write one line at a time, right, which is annoying. But for example, let's say that uh, um, I'm working with some protocol, network protocol, and then, you know, this network protocol is composed by packets, and then each packet, uh, the, the structure, the first there is a byte, which is a magic number for that integrity, and we know that the magic number um, uh, must be equal to um, uh, AB, for example. Then we have another byte, which is the size, and then we have the payload, which is an array of that number of bytes of, uh, of uh, well, of data payload, right? Okay, so once we, we have this, this description written here, we evaluate this. Um, you can also say, okay, what happens if I, if, if I try to, to map, right, a packet at offset zero? It will fail, why? Because you remember we said it has a magic number, you see? Constant expression fails for field packet dot magic because there is not a packet there. But if we say that byte at zero byte equals XAB, then you can see here that, uh, well, uh, we got over packet. Um, similarly, similarly, we can say, for example, um, um, let's say, um, okay, I want to write a packet you know, at offset uh, 30 bytes, right? I don't specify the magic, but I say I want to, that the packet is gonna have four bytes, right? Um, yeah, okay, this change in the IO space, you can see it here. And if now I map the packet at, at 30 bytes, you see that the payload basically now is, is, um, is, um, it's an array of four of four bytes. Okay, okay. This this interface um, it gives you uh, an editor. Actually, for example, um, if you do this, um, this means I want to edit the packet at, at, at that offset. And you see here, you get an editor, a nice editor here where you can actually, for example, okay. Let's pay attention. Let's say one, two, three, four. And then if I if I change this value, it will change in the IO space. You see, it just changed there. One, two, three, four. Yes. Um, so yeah, this is what I meant. You know, as you can see, there is no more and decode uh, compute uh, the encode stuff here. The encoder and decoder is automatic, and this is not a binary parser generator neither. So. Um, obviously, this is fun. I mean, you can write definitions for those little packets and examples, but uh, when it comes to, to edit like real binary data, you have to actually describe, right, the, the structure. So for that, this is where the pickles come to, to, to the game. Um, in Emacs, oh, oh, in Emacs, <laughs> in POC, <laughs> I'm going to show you now this is the source, the source, the, the source directory of, of POC. We distribute with POC uh, a lot of pickles. Those are pickles. And as you can see here, um, we have elf, an elf pickle, of course, uh, which contains pre-written and predefined definitions for many uh, data structures that are common in elf files, right? Like symbols, like dynamic uh, section entries, like section groups, flags, section header tables, uh, segment header tables and the the file itself 
And look, you can also use methods, define methods and everything. Um, so how do you use a pickle? Well, I'm going to show you. Let me go back to the REPL. So let me open again BLS. Oh, what happened? Oh, it's already open, probably. OK, let me see. Using this interface, we also have here a nice menu with the, yeah. So, yeah. So now we switch to the to the L file. Fine. Now, to load the pickle, I say load elf. So they, this loaded those uh, all the elf pickles, which are written in both them themselves and that you can write your own, of course. So now the elf definitions are available, right? So one of the definitions in the elf pickle is an elf64 file, right? Which is a big structure, actually. So we can map it, we can say bar elf equals L64 file at zero bytes. Okay, this is the declaration of a variable. The POC domain specific language is actually a full-fledged programming language. So we have variables, we have uh, whatever sort of things, lambdas, it is a statically typed and lexically scoped language. Um, well, I like it very much, which is not surprising, but um, I, I think it's a nice language, okay. Um, so, I loaded the elf pickle into POC. So now POC is aware of all the definitions, right? Um, so now I'm gonna map, I'm gonna define a variable with the, the elf64 file at offset zero, because obviously the data starts at offset zero in the file. Um, so then of course this elf thing here is, it is exactly, exactly, uh, it is exactly like the, uh, well, okay, it was a little bit slow, you see, uh, like the packet, like the packet adopted zero. Okay, this is my, okay, correct. But um, in this interface, we have, a, um, um, well, a, you know, a list of, of mappings, right? So you can see in the right, and then in the bottom, in the output buffer at the bottom, you can see here how it shows the value that is selected here. So this is an L file starting at, at byte at offset zero bytes. Now this L file, you see that uh, it contains a header, you see below, and I can scroll from here, which is uh, the, the data of the header of the L file. It has an array of, of section header tables. This is a section header table with all those entries, and you can see all those entries here. Um, and those are the segments in the L file, right? So you can see um, this is a, the description of a segment in the, in the L file. Yeah. Okay. Um, now the thing is the following. Here you can also edit them. Like for example, this, right? This is the program header uh, number four. Well, you know, the entry in the first, so it is the number four. Um, and we could vandalize this L file, you know, by changing, you know, any of the values. If I try to do it, I will get an error because this is BNLS and I don't have right access to it with permission. But anyway, you get it. Um, so yeah, I mean, um, those are the mappings. Yeah, so you can basically navigate through your uh, structures. So for example, remember the packet. Um, I could map. Uh, a packet, I could do a non-strict mapping because remember the magic number, you know, and this is another file, so it will not. So you see, this is the this is this will be a packet, you know, mapped and offset the zero bytes in the in the file. Um, and as you can see, everything is adaptive, right? Because the size now it happens to be 69, a nice number, and then the payload, you know, is 69 bytes with those values, which we could edit as well. Of course, right? If we come here, we could edit in terms of, of, of the packet. So this actually shows how the same data can be actually edited and accessed in different uh, as different structures. Because this is an L file mapped at zero bytes, you know, with all those uh, headers and everything. And this is just a, a little packet that we just defined at zero byte. So, um, I hope that with this you can get the again POC is very big. You can do many, many things. For example, uh, and many actually quite cool things. For example, 
Um, if you say you have one packet at zero bytes and you have another packet at byte uh, 12, for example, um, if you load the diff pickle, which again is 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 a, a .pk file with poke code in it, so it's not written in C or in anything. Um, this, this provides you a function which is called diff structure, and then you pass p1 and then you pass p2. Um, oh, p2, and look, it generates a structure binary diff. Um, oh, actually, let's make it more interesting. Okay, you get a structure binary diff, you know, uh, of uh, what is different from one packet to the other. And this diff output is written in POC2. So that's why this is extensible, because you can actually create even your own commands, right? Just by defining uh, POC functions. So, for example, um, well, I don't know how much time I have. Yeah, actually, I think I have time. So I could define a function. Uh, okay, I could define a function um, um, compare packets, for example, that gets one argument, which is a packet that we defined before, p1, and then packet p2, then returns void. And then it does what, what what we just did, right? In the which is it calls a div structure a p one b p two. Okay, this is <laughs> this is okay. Let's make it a little bit more interesting because otherwise, what a stupid command, right? Okay, let's make it print uh, 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 packets div, for example. <laughs> yeah. So then you know it does something more, you know, than just calling to the other calling to the other command. So um, if we evaluate this now, you we have just extended book with a new function that you can use as a command. So you can say packet compare p1 p1 p2 p2. Oh, what was it called? Oh, compare packets. Sorry, compare packets. There you go. Well, you know, with the little addition. So this way you can extend the tool. You can support more uh, more uh, uh, formats, like binary formats. Um, you can write uh, your own more commands that very often will be useful for other people. So you can actually put them in a pickle, like in a .pk file and send it to us in the POC project, and then we will um, we will add it to the POC distribution so everyone can actually benefit from your pickles. Um, OK, let me see. Because if I start showing things here, I will be here until tomorrow. Um, OK, I show the divs, because those are very cool. Uh, I show, yeah, I mean, um, if I go to ELF, um, you will see that here there are many, just to show you, you know, a little, a little flavor of how the, the description language works, right? But it's okay. I mean, oh, by the way, <laughs> oh, I did not show you the methods. Okay, well, wait a second. Um, so, we have been mapping an ELF64 file, right? An offset zero, zero bytes. Uh, but what is an ELF64 file? Well, for POC, because we just loaded this ELF64, uh, this, the ELF pickle, an ELF64 file is a header of this type. Then the, it is an array of a number of, of entries, which is determined by a field in the header. Uh, at some particular offset in the in the IO space in the file. Um, and also it's optional because uh, this field it only exists right 
if if uh, if if there is uh, any number of entries in the if, well if, if the L file contains some sections, otherwise it does not exist. So <laughs> so actually uh, I always use this uh, as an example because those fields in L files are very they, they use everything. <laughs> they are optional files. They have labels. And they are arrays. Well, they don't have constraint expressions, but okay. And uh, so an L field, uh, file, L64 file, is, is a header, is a, a table of section headers, and it's a table of program headers. And then you see here that in POC you can define methods for your, for your, um, for, for your types, right? And then, yes, this is the elf pickle. So this is, you know, the little child of my eyes because I use this, you know, almost daily in my work. Um, so it has a lot of methods, right? And a lot of things. But this doesn't mean that, for example, we defined before here our packet and here we could define, okay, method. Um, I don't know, something interesting here. Uh, I don't know, uh, double size. <laughs> this is a very stupid method, but okay. Uh, byte, and then we return um, size multiplied by two. Told you it's very stupid, but okay. It's just for demonstration purposes. Oops. So, if I define, so of course, obviously, this, this size here, it will be the value of this field in whatever instance of um, of packet that we are operating on, right? So if we evaluate this, and then um, we get a new packet here because we change the definition of the type, so we want to map another one here, and we can call uh, double size. Ah, it's not double size. Okay, it's without underscore. Sorry, I am. My demos are bad. Double size, okay, 138 in decimal. Actually, uh, let me change the output base. This is, by incidentally, this is the nice uh, in buffer in the Emacs interface to change settings in Pope. So we can put the output base to 16. Yeah, and this is a bug in the REPL that <laughs> actually uh, only happens in, in very fast machines. Don't ask me why, I'm investigating. Um, Anyway, so you can have you can have uh, methods. Okay, this was a stupid method, but sometimes the methods are 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 very useful. For example, in the L file, you see that you have um, basically an array of section headers. Now you can see here that each section header the name is not a string, so the name is is actually an offset into the data of some uh, other section. Which is a string table, so it gets you know it's it's convoluted. It's not trivial. So this means that yes, I have this uh, this uh, this data you know which is hierarchical and everything is nice, but the methods are useful because um, you can say things like elf elf. Remember elf was this this is a variable that contains the l64 file mapped at zero bytes okay so you can say you can use one of the methods which is get sections by name now this method get sections by name you specify a name surprise and then it gives you an array of um, it gives you an array of section headers for with the sections actually having that name which is very handy because if I wanted to access the, the contents of this section, I will do something like, uh, for example, uh, bar uh, text uh, header, text header, the entry zero, because I know there is only one in this cell file. So then this text header is, is, the, is the section header. And then if I wanted all the bytes, if I wanted all the bytes of this um, of this uh, of this second stored in this section, I could say something like byte. Uh, how many bytes I want? Well, it would be uh, text header dot sh size at text header dot sh offset. Why? Because um, 
those are, well, L files are, they were like this. There are, SH offset is an entry in the section header and, uh, table entry that tells where in the file the data starts and SH size is what is obviously is, right? And, uh, and yeah, and this will be, okay, this will take a while. I don't know why this is so slow. I'm sorry about that. Um, hello. It's <laughs> struggling. <laughs> oh, this was oh, this was being a less. I thought it was a toy hell file. Okay, it will come. Um, and I think this is all. I mean, um, I will show you a lot more things, which is fun, but um, you will have to find it by yourselves, huh? because otherwise, I eternize, eternize myself here and people get upset. Okay, uh, let me stop the screen sharing. Yes. Okay. Now I'm going to pass like 30 slides that we will not use. Okay. So don't be scared. Let me see. How much time I have left? Like 10 minutes less. Uh, yeah. You see, you see all those slides. That's my optimism speaking. Uh, pretty printers. Oh, it takes a while for the slides to actually show in the screen. I, I just need like the three or two last slides. Oops. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. So the program itself, as you have seen, um, um, well, okay, how, what is it? What is it? You have seen a command line interface. That was this poke, which is a C program. Um, this C program uses uh, is linked with libpoke, which is uh, the component. Is it's another C program, but it's a shared library, which contains the incremental compiler um, of the poke language. It it contains the implementation of the of the of what makes the IO spaces possible. Like the the file I/O space, the memory I/O space, the process I/O space, and others that I have not shown you, um, and and you know everything. Most of the logic is in libpoke. Now poke is just the command line interface, um, but also we are actually integrating other programs, in particular other GNU programs. This is not in those programs upstream yet, but we are sending patches and. For, for example, for GDB, so from GDB, you can poke a data in buffers in, your, in, your, in the programs you are debugging. It's quite cool. Also in Binutils, because I, I am integrating poke in the assembler. So in the assembler, you can specify data directives and you specify poke code. Um, and also lately, the family is growing because uh, there is this poke daemon, which was added recently. And um, then you can connect to that daemon in certain channels, and then you, those are, we call them pokelets. And the, the Emacs interface, I just show you in this demo today, actually this Emacs acts as a set of pokelets that communicate with the pokeD, with the poke daemon that is linked with the poke. Also, we have binary utilities because I have not shown you, but in poke you can write very easily filters, binary programs, uh, binary utilities, in POC, in the language itself, in this descriptive language. Um, and also we have the pickles. We have pickles for ELF, for DORF, for CTF, for file, some file systems, and so on. And hopefully the family, the collection of pickles will grow when you, you people write more and send them to us. Um, so yeah, we are having fun, as you can see here. Um, the architecture, I don't have time to talk about this. I think it's interesting, but no time next time. Now the project. Okay. POC is a GNU uh, program. As such, it's developed by the GNU project. I am the GNU maintainer. I have the donor of this program. Um, and then, well, there is a, 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 a group of, 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 of hackers, of GNU hackers, who, who, who hack the, in the program, right? Um, it is part of the GNU system because it's part of the GNU project. Um, and of course, the license is GPL version 3 plus uh, both applications and libraries. And that's not going to change unless there is a GPL version 4 in the future, or you see, or any later version. Um, 
Then, uh, those are the project resources. If you are interested, if you like what you saw, I'm not talking about me, about the program. Um, go to, uh, this is the, our homepage. Uh, obviously, the development resources are in savannah.knu.org because this is a GNU program. Uh, we have a development mailing list. All the development is done there. Uh, so please subscribe if you are interested. And we have a, a channel poke in the in 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 the IRC in Liberado chat. And also there is a, a, a website which is community driven uh, called Pocology, where we have uh, like practical um, information. It's sort of I like to think of that sort of the Emacs wiki, you know, of poke, right? Sort of. Um, we released recently version point 2.1, version 2 actually, and 2.1, which is a, a bug fix release. Tomorrow we'll be releasing 2.2, another bug fix release. Uh, but of course, since we released version 2, we are already working on version 3, which has a lot of new exciting things, including the demon and so on. Um, they are in POC 3. If you want to try the latest and greatest and funniest and, you know, and, and more unstable, you uh, use the master branch in the Git repo. And other POC related projects and applications are popping up around, um, like the POC demo, like the, the POClets, and some other user interfaces. A text user interface has been made by another person, um, and so on. Because, oh well, this is this is nice. Um, so, well, if you are interested, uh, you are, of course, welcome to hack with us. And uh, and uh, I'm, I'm done. I'm done. Thank you very much for your attention. So I don't know how the questions and answers work. Is the streaming going well? <laughs> I mean, are we in the present now, or uh, we, we are, we are delayed? The we are delayed, but uh, uh, people are actually, uh, I think, 25 minutes uh, delayed. Oh. <laughs> okay. Well. Uh, but uh, we have uh, some com uh, comments, uh, for example, uh, Lee Rao uh, from Liebeboot uh, that uh, says uh, it uh, reminds them uh, bin CFG uh, on, uh, on Core Boot Tools, I think, uh, and uh, who says that uh, uh, they might use this for its own purpose. Very nice, uh, very nice. <laughs> I like to. I I love to hear that. Yes. Um, I think uh, the good the good thing to do is to take questions from the the IRC channel on the room. Oh yeah, channel. yeah. Uh, what should I do? Should I go to the IRC and use the, the stream now? Because this is a little bit confusing. Um, yes, I, I think that's better. Uh, we will close the, close the stream now and. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And perhaps so you I go can... to the, the channel. Uh, they do not uh, finish the, the stream at uh, this time. There are, uh, there are uh, perhaps, yeah, uh, well, they, they are very delayed. They are the middle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, actually, the next talk should start, right? So. Now, there, there is no uh, next talk on this room. So, what? It's so I could have used like um, one more hour. Uh, no, <laughs> but uh, it's okay if we finish the if we finish it. So uh, yeah, yeah. thank you, thank you, no. and uh, see you on the IRC. Sure. Ciao. 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 Ciao.